Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer. So this one is half Swedish on the home side, half American on the away side. And out of the two breweries involved in this one, it is only the Swedish brewery that is featured on the channel before. The American one is completely new to me. So when it comes to the Swedish brewery, if people were to ask me about them, I would say that they're best known for their different kinds of uh, cakey... Uh, imperial stouts, pastry stouts they're calling them these days, but these guys were a real pioneer within this particular beer category here in Sweden and further afield in Europe, but they also do some really nice big fruity juicy sour beers, but they are a very well rounded brewery these days in fact, and potentially one of the most recognisable names when it comes to Swedish craft beer. When it comes to the American brewery, these guys I guess could be regarded as a very kind of up and coming brewery, although they do have a very strong nationwide reputation what I understand, but they are also very well known for their big imperial stouts and also their kind of fruity smoothie sour beers actually so this matching these two breweries for a collaboration beer I think is a little bit of a match made in heaven but the beer itself is part of a series of beers from the home brewery that I love very much I always look forward to these ones being released it's one of their latest releases through System Bolaget here in Sweden it's a style that I very much enjoy so needless to say I am very very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us so hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always i hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well so uh, yeah for the home side of things then we are going to head up towards stockholm the swedish capital we're going to go to the northwest of the city to sundbybury and those of you who watch the channel for long enough will know that that means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the wonderful omnipoil so this particular beer is called bianca hydra this one comes in at 6% ABV, they're describing it as a blueberry banana split lassi goza and this is of course brewed in collaboration with Mortalis Brewing Company who come from Avon just a little bit to the south of Rochester in kind of north central New York if we can call it that. So uh, yeah, another brewery that from the States that is new to me but one that has a very very good reputation and Hydra is one of their main series of uh, kind of modern sour beers that they do from what I gather. So yeah, a kind of combination of two very, very well respected modern sour beer brewers and a combination of two of their most well known and well appreciated series. So yeah, nothing to complain about there. But this beer was released as part of the Tidferig sortiment through System Bolaget here in Sweden in the beginning of June uh, 2023. So, uh, yeah, I forget exactly how much I paid for this one, to be honest with you, but these beers are always a little bit more expensive in the Bianca series, but they always tend to be pretty damn good. But, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it's going to have in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved in this one before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done, from Omnipoil and my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Mortalis Brewing Company. Very first time we're trying something involving them, as I've mentioned already. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the search bar, put your hometown, state, county, wherever you like in there. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that, though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in both the Swedish and the American playlist, since it is dual nationality. And, uh, of course, you can check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well. But, yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then, and I'll tell you a wee bit about the breweries. We'll start off with Omnipoil in this case, since they are the home brewery. So... Uh, Omnipoil was founded back in 2011 by Henrik Fenty, who is a long-time home brewer, and Carl Grandin, who is a clothing designer. But the two had been friends for a long time, and they'd often had discussions about starting a brewery together because they discussed how insular the craft beer scene was, both in Sweden and abroad. And they felt that they wanted to reinvigorate it from both a stylistic 
and a gastronomic sense and so this partnership that they had between a home brewer and a designer felt very logical to them and they decided to go for it. But the name Omni Pollo is derived from omnipotent chicken, Omni Pollo, Pollo being Spanish for chicken, and these guys were gypsy brewers until 2020. So early on they opened the Omni Pollo's Hat in Stockholm as a collaboration with Pizza Hat which has become very popular in the city. They've got a number of kind of exclusive um, Omni Pollo beers on tap there as, and things that you're not going to find in other places but uh, they do some really nice pizza as well I have to say and that is somewhere that I do want to hit up for uh, a kind of out and about video at some stage so keep your eyes peeled for that uh, but in 2019 they opened up another bar in Hamburg down in Germany and they also opened one up in Gothenburg that year but that closed uh, not long after that one turned out not to be so profitable but they do also have a bar in Tokyo Japan these days which I will need to go and check out at some stage but in March of 2020 they announced that they would open their own brewery at Sumbiberi uh, to the northwest of central Stockholm in a former church which had previously been home to Sumbiberi Schuksbrugeri but apparently the brewing capacity there started off at around 100,000 litres of beer per year but they've scaled up so that they can brew 600 thousand litres uh, but they've got a tap room open there that you can go and visit and as of June 2023 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced about 400 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. Uh, as I've said to you over the years these guys became very well known for the big kind of cakey sweet imperial stouts we would call them pastry stouts these days these guys were one of the real pioneers in this particular beer style if you like across Europe and it was kind of flavour essences and stuff they were using in them. So it was really, really quite interesting. But they were always very good at the pure side of brewing as well. So I've had some really nice lager beers from them. The Omnipoil Pilsner is very, very solid in my experience. Uh, but also the Nebuchadnezzar West Coast Double IPA is great. And uh, also the, um, the uh, Fata Morgana, the New England Hazy IPA, one of the cult classic Swedish New England IPAs in my opinion. But anything from the Bianca series is also very good. So, um, yeah, I would recommend that you have a go at some of these beers if you get the chance. But, yeah, that is everything I can tell you about Omnipoil for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's go on to the American side of things. So, Mortalis Brewing Company. As I mentioned to you already, these guys are based in Avon in New York, which is a little bit to the south of Rochester, which you'll kind of find on the north coast of uh, New York State. It's kind of right in the middle of the state, north central, as I said earlier. Uh, but this brewery was founded back in 2017 by a group of five co-owners. So this is Paul Grenier, Gretchen Salber Grenier, uh, Dave Luckenbach, Missy Salva Luckenbach, and then Jason Kiefer, who is Paul's um, Paul's uh, childhood friend. But uh, Paul and Dave, of course, met through their wives, who are sisters, and they shared an interest in beer. So they began to homebrew together, which they did for about 10 years before starting the brewery. And so they are the ones who are the brew team, who started the brew team within uh, Mortalis Brewing Company. So Melissa acts as the brewery's account specialist, Gretchen is the operations officer and Jason is the chief financial officer and also the company's legal counsel. But uh, early on they participated in a competition called Brew in Livingston Business Education uh, business plan competition basically and uh, this was started by the Living Livingston County Economic Development Office to try and encourage uh, start up breweries and basically just grow the local economy but this secured them some state funds and they also received funding from a Kickstarter campaign that they did receiving in total $31,000 and uh, this allowed them to fund uh, a little bit of the renovation of their premises and also a little bit of uh, kind of new equipment and things. So they started off with a five barrel brewing system and a one barrel pilot kit and uh, this was used mainly for their experimental batches. But the brewery opened its doors in August of 2018 and they soon added Josh Bauerlein to the brewing team who had many years of home brewing experience behind them. But over the course of 2019 they produced around 1,000 US barrels which translates to roughly 160,000 litres and over the last few years they've been travelling to different beer festivals around the country and they've built a very strong reputation 
particularly for their sour beers and their imperial stouts. They do have quite an impressive barrel programme if you go and read about it. But more recently, they've also added uh, Joey Loenig to the brewing team, and they're just kind of continuing to be prolific and develop new beers. As I said to you earlier, this brewery are probably best known for their big uh, imperial stouts and their barrel programme, but also for those kind of modern smoothie Nordic whatever we're going to call them, sour beers. But as of June 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 550 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. And if you think that they've only been around for about five, maybe six years at most, that is pretty damn impressive. That's at least, uh, that's more than one beer, actually. Every week, in fact. So, uh, yeah, that is everything I can tell you about Mortalis Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's go on then and actually have a taste of this beer. I'm really curious about this one. So, as you can see... Uh, this beer has a little bit of a mix of the uh, Mortalis artwork there on the top and then the more classic Carl Grandin stuff uh, on the bottom. But you can see plain silver top on the can there. This one is a 440 milliliter. I don't know what that translates to in uh, American Freedom Units, you know, all the fluid ounces and all that kind of stuff. I <laughs> really don't get why they use that system, but that's another story. But uh, yeah, this one was brewed. Uh, by Omnipoil at the Proof Brewery in Lucrece de Hifte down in Ghent, uh, down near Ghent in Belgium, I should say. So this is one of their De Proof beers. Uh, many breweries brew down there, in fact. But like I said, this was released as part of the Tilferi Temporary Sortiment through Systembolag here in Sweden uh, toward, uh, yeah, in the beginning, middle of June 2023. And they're describing this one as a blueberry banana split Lassi Goza. So yeah, the Bianca series is, of course, known as the Lassi Goza series, and we've had many of those over the years but there seems to have also been many different type kinds of hydra from uh, mortalis as well so we'll need to see if we can get a hold of those at uh, some point to review on the channel but yeah really nicely presented this one let's get this guy out into the glass and see what it's all about another six percent goza so remember the goza is of course a german style of beer originally i forget the name of the town it's from but the goza is where essentially they used to put them in cellars uh, they used to put them in bottles and let them ferment in the cellar. You get a cloud, basically a cloud of foam just coming up over the top. But they would put a little bit of salt and things in them. So yeah, the Goza always has a little bit of a kind of salty characteristic to it. But yeah, just look at the colour of this thing as it pours. This is pretty damn impressive, I have to say. So uh, yeah, I think we'll leave that for the moment because that's enough to take a, a look at the... Um, the colour of the beer. So uh, as you can see, <laughs> this one's poured just as we've seen from a number of the other beers in this particular series. So um, the head before it disappears is about a half finger, lovely kind of foamy head. You can see that it's got this very bright, almost luminous kind of purple quality to it, <laughs> which is nice. Reminds me of the Heart of Midlothian football shirt, as I always call it, a lovely sort of burgundy bright pink purple colour you can see some uh, smaller bubbles toward the top of the head there some more kind of foamy things a few bumpy bubbles as well but it's kind of medium sized bubbles that are just sitting on the surface of the liquid there but yeah um, colour wise this one uh, it's kind of hard to see actually it looks like a very 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 dark sort of uh, purple tint sort of thing almost like beetroot colour I think it's fair to say so remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any battle agent you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect the colour too. But most of the colour in this one, I'm guessing, will have come from the addition of uh, the blackberries. In, or blueberries in this one, sorry, it's not blackberries. So yeah, most of the colour in this one will be coming from the addition of the, yeah, the blackberries. Some of the malty characteristics in this one uh, will be interesting to see too. Some of these um, Lassie Goza beers can be very, some of them can be very, very sweet, but some of them can be a little bit more kind of savoury and things. And the ones that tend to be as dark as this have tended to be more kind of savoury and like pastry sours rather than smoothie sours. 
in uh, in my opinion. So that would for me that's a, there's a clear divide between those styles. The smoothie sours are the ones that are very kind of creamy and sweet, whereas the pastry ones are the ones that have that sort of savoury type base to them. I'm not sure exactly where this one is going to lie, but we'll just need to see. Not much in the way of visible carbonation with this beer. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. A few little ones going up toward the surface of the beer, but you can see the head has just faded away a little bit. A little bit of a kind of foamy layer on the top and some nice, uh, a nice kind of foamy ring around the edge of this one. And I will say, just from moving the beer around, there's a hell of an aroma of banana coming off this one. And I will admit, I don't particularly like the smell of banana. So, um, yeah. We'll need to see with this mud, but I've found, I, I'm curious about this one, as I say, it was a Bianca, and I've had ones that have had other things in them before, that I've not, that I wouldn't like normally, and I've always enjoyed the beer, so that was the main reason behind getting this one, but yeah, banana is like one of the kind of fruit, few fruits that I don't particularly like, uh, but I like, you know, I like candied banana, I have to say that, I do like banana flavour. Uh, and, and sweets and things like that, if that makes sense. But yeah, let's have a wee look at the aroma of this one then and see what it's all about. Oh yeah, like when you go into it more closely, it's a lot more kind of berry leaning, I have to say. Um, yeah. Now as I've often said with these kind of modern sour beers, very often they are very straightforward in their aroma profiles, but if they're done correctly, they're beautiful beers to drink. They are really, really nice. And I think this one's going to be no exception to that. But yeah, as soon as you stick your nose into the glass with this one, the blueberries just jump out at you. And it's almost like the, the aroma of this beer reminds me of a sweet we had back home in Scotland called uh, Parma Violets. It really has that kind of Parma Violet, like candied fruity note to it, which is interesting. So yeah. For me, the way this goes together is uh, is really, really interesting, as I said. Um, but yeah, the backbone of this beer is very... It's quite hard to pick up, actually, because the the, the kind of saltiness from the goza and the black, the blueberry notes out of it are just... Uh, are really, yeah, the, the blueberry notes are so um, kind of sharp and candied, if you like. So, yeah, the way this one goes together, I think, is very, very nice in that sense. Um, but, yeah, the where do we start with this beer? Then? Let's see if we can get a bit more of the maltiness out of it. I mean, if you sugar it up, you do get a little bit of this kind of... You can smell there's a little bit of a kind of cake edge, if you like, there to this one. Like a sort of... It's not even chocolatey. It is more like a kind of fruit cakey type thing of this one. So you get a kind of sponge cakey edge to this. There's a little bit of that kind of like fruit soaked uh, sponge cakey note in this one. Maybe a little bit of kind of brown bread and things like that. I do get a little touch of a kind of toasty. Um, I do get a little touch of a kind of toasty brown sugary note out of this one. But um, yeah. Yeah, there is a little bit of a kind of sweet, toasty brown sugary note in there, a little bit more a more oily brown sugary note in there. But yeah, this one has a kind of um, it has more of a sort of sponge cakey, fruity kind of brown sugary sponge cakey backbone to it. There's a little bit of the kind of yogurty characteristic that you can sometimes get out of these beers. There's a little bit of that kind of petit filou yogurt type thing going on with this one. But other than that, um, I don't know if there's too much to report. On the malt base with this beer, this one's really kind of quirky in that sense, I have to say. But yeah, I like how it goes together. Um, yeah, on the for me, on the um, on the hoppy, I think that's everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of the beer. To be honest with you, on the hoppy side of things. Um, I do. I think with the Bianca series, Omnipoil don't usually use hops, and it's an interesting thing to talk about when it comes to sour beers. A lot of modern breweries choose not to use hops, because if you put fresh hops in these beers, the bitterness takes away from the sour side of the beers. Likewise with the more modern sour beers, if you put fruit in as an adjunct, they will suppress the green component anyway. 
Uh, back in the day with the old school kind of woody traditional Belgian syrup beers, they tended to use older hops that had lost a little bit of their alpha acid potency. And this is one of the things with um, this is one of the things with um, with modern breweries, as I say, it's always interesting to ask them what their hopping mentality is. But I believe that Omnipoi and many, uh, actually many Nordic sour beer breweries don't use. Um, they don't tend to use um, the the hops in their beers, actually. Um, so yeah, that's worth knowing. But interesting point anyway. But I do find you still get a little bit of a placebo effect out of these beers. There's a little bit of floral character. There's a little bit of grassiness. Um, so yeah, the way that that goes together in this one, I think, is is really quite interesting. Um, yeah, aroma wise, kind of is. You do get a little bit of grassy and floral character out of it, but that is, as I say, I'm pretty sure placebo. So on the fruity side of things, for me, it's kind of interesting because you do you get a little bit of an almost candied bubble gummy note out of this beer. But of course you do have the banana in there, which I'm sure knowing on the coil it will be flavour essence. They like to use flavour essences in their beers. Um, but then you also have um, the kind of, you get a mix of fruity characters in there. It almost smells like it's a little touch of cherry or something, but the blueberries in this are very bright and very kind of juicy. I do wonder if they're using a combination of um, like fruit puree and a little bit of flavour essence. I've, I've suspected for a long time that's what Omnipoil do with their beers. Um, but yeah, aroma-wise, this is very nice. The, the more that you smell this one, the more your nose adjusts to it and you start to get all the other. Um, you get a little bit more kind of, you get a little bit of like a fig and a raisin and a plum and stuff coming out of the aroma of the beer as well. You get these other little placebo notes. But uh, yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time to just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it, but I think it's about time that um, we get stuck into this one then. Let's do this. So this is the uh, the Bianca Hydra, a blueberry banana split last it goes at 6% ABV. This version is brewed by Omnipoil, uh, based in Stockholm and Sweden, but they brew the beer down outside again in Belgium, and it's in collaboration with Mertalis Brewing Company from Avon, New York, over in the US. Apparently this has been brewed in the US as well, I should point that out. There is a version over there which I believe is called Hydra Bianca. So yeah, let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. As always, the Bianca series does not let you down. And I will say I'm glad about this, because as I said, that, that big banana aroma that I got out of this one at the start, I was I was a bit put off by that, to be honest. But when you actually taste it, the banana kind of comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste. And it's quite nice the way it comes out, I have to say, actually. Um, yeah, this is good. Uh, I, I love... You know, I love berry sours. A lot of our desserts back home in Scotland are based on berries. So, um, yeah, this one is um, it's really quite nice. So, uh, yeah, where do we start with this one then? Um, just beautiful, beautiful beer. It gives you everything. If you know this series, you know, it does, um, it gives you everything you want. What I would also say about this beer is that stylistically, it's one of these ones that kind of straddles the line between being a, a, a pastry sour and uh, a smoothie sour. It's got a little bit of everything. Like in the beginning, it is more like a kind of smoothie sour, but in the aftertaste, it is more like a pastry sour. That's, that is most definitely fair to say with this beer. Um, yeah, I like that about uh, about this one for sure. But let's try and break this beer down and describe the flavour for you a little bit more in depth as we always do. We'll start in the middle third of the palate as usual. So the backbone of this beer, um, the backbone of this beer, it's a little bit more, um, as I said, you've got a little bit of a kind of wholemeal 
Um, you do get a little bit of bread crust out of this one, actually. There is a little bit of that kind of wholemeal brown bready bread crust in there. Further forward on that middle third of the palate, there's like a little touch of woodiness and a very slight nuttiness coming out of this one. But yeah, above that, it very quickly becomes like a sort of cake edge, almost. Uh, which is good. So yeah, it has got a little bit of a more kind of cake edge to it, this beer. So you can feel the, if, uh, what I mean by cake edge is the bit that's kind of stuck to the paper when you have like a muffin or something, you know, just that slightly harder edge that you get. But then above that, you start to get a more kind of sweet, you start to get a more kind of um, sweet, um, you get a little bit more of a kind of um, s sweeter, like brown sugary, sponge cakey sort of thing out of this one. And you can feel that within, you can feel that layer just kind of building up. And it's got a little bit, the beer has a, it has, it's almost a bit like banana bread actually. It's like got that banana, the, the banana's kind of infused into that kind of sponge cakey note in the middle of your palate with the beer. And there's a little bit of a, like a kind of bubble gummy type sweetness in there as well. And just a little bit of a kind of nutty character. So yeah, above the sort of bread crust and the cake edge, you've got this really fluffy layer in there, which really is very much like a, a kind of sponge cake. Um, yeah, I like that for sure. So, on top of that, this is an interesting one for me because it does have, there's a little bit of a, sometimes with these mm. Bianca ones you can often get like a little bit of a, mm. you, sometimes with the Bianca ones you can often get a little bit of a, um, a sort of cocoa nibby type chocolatey thing toward the back of the middle third of the palate. There's a little bit of that going on there with this one. It's like a little bit of a kind of cocoa nibby, chocolate cakey type note there. So there is a slight layer of that above the kind of more white or brown sugary sponge cake that I was talking about earlier. But then you start to get some of the brown sugar. So there's a little bit of a very slightly toasty brown sugary layer there across the middle third of your palate. And in the dead centre of your tongue, you get a wee bit of a more oily, sweet caramelly type quality coming out of this one. So you get that oily, sweet, kind of caramelly note to it. Um, and yeah, I think that goes together too. Um, um, so yeah, the brown sugary notes in this beer are... Um, the brown sugary notes in this beer are quite nice. They do come out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste that you go. But I think, to be honest, I think we said everything we need to about that middle third of your palate. The only other thing I would add is that in the base, you get a little bit of the saltiness and things coming out of this one. Um, so, yeah, this is nice. A mix of like toasty brown sugar and a little bit of kind of saltiness and things uh, coming out of this one. So, yeah. It's good stuff. It's what you'd expect of the goes, as I said. But let's go on to the back third of the palate then. As I've always, as, as I've often said, the back third of the palate gives you very similar flavours to the middle third of your palate, but they come out in different intensities. But remember that general trend that uh, the more uh, the more bitter uh, flavours come out further back on the palate, the sweeter flavours come out further forward. Anyway, back third of the palate then. So you can feel the base of that. Um, you can feel the base of that back third of your palate um, is a little bit more, yeah, you can feel the bread crusty character is a little bit more kind of, um, it has a little bit more dryness to it for sure. But then above that you've got the cake edge which again feels a little bit drier and then you have that um, kind of more fluffy sponge cakey sort of thing with the banana infused into it so you can feel that it feels more like a kind of white sponge actually on the back third of the palate so it feels like it's got a little bit more brown sugar in the middle um, third of your palate of course so yeah, you can feel that sort of sponge cakey thing and that layer is of course a lot more kind of tall and airy and then above that you do get a kind of thinner uh, layer of a more chocolate 
spongy character, then above everything else you can feel there's just a very slight like cocoa nib and toasty brown sugar layer just capping off the top of that uh, that back third of your palate and then above everything else you start to get a wee bit of yeasty character coming out of this beer. So the yeasty side of this beer is kind of interesting, like it's a very kind of doughy sweet like pumpernickel bread that you get out of this one so you feel that sweet doughy pumpernickel type bread out of this one um and then yeah it's kind of like it's wrapped in honeycomb and it's almost got a very slight phenolic kind of touch to it which is really interesting it's almost got a little bit of a kind of christmas puddingy type note to it the yeasty character in this beer but yeah as i say you can feel that above the back third of the palate there so um yeah you can feel the uh, the back third of the palate, the flavour is a lot taller and then as you come forward into the middle third of your palate it just kind of condenses down and squashes together. But yeah, I think that covers the kind of malty and yeasty side of the beer to be honest with you. Now as I said earlier, I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure, I was pretty sure from the aroma that this beer didn't contain hops and I'm pretty certain of it from the actual flavour of the beer. The sides of your palate are very smooth, they're not dry and bitter at all to be honest with you but you do still get a little touch of kind of placebo effect in there it feels like there's a little bit of smooth earthiness there's a little bit of herbal character there and as you come further forward you get a little bit of a more kind of floral aromatic sort of thing uh, coming out of this one so you get a little bit of you get a little bit of that so a little bit more kind of floral aromatic sort of thing and then round the front curve of your palate there's a little bit more of a um, yeah you do get a little touch of kind of woodiness and grassiness and stuff like that but very very minimal as I say the hoppy characters that I'm picking up in this beer are kind of placebo just because you know with beer you're used to that kind of thing um, but yeah I think we can look at the front third of the palate then and the kind of fruity side of things um, so yeah the border region between front third and middle third of your palate you get a little bit of kind of sponge cakey build up in there it's got a little bit of bready cut there's a little bit like brown bread underneath and then a white kind of banana type spongy character building up in there um, so yeah um, um, so yeah the base of that front 30 palette again you get a little touch of bread crust lovely kind of smooth almost woody character in there and then you get the kind of banana bread spongy sort of thing coming out of this one and above that you've got the blueberry notes coming out of the beer um, and yeah you have to remember the fruity character in this beer is uh, the fruity character in this beer is uh, very uh, yeah it's very uh, it is very kind of soft and juicy in a sense but this beer isn't it's more sweet and just very slightly tart rather than being really sharp and sour like you're going to get from some of the lambics and things like this and some of the juiciness of the blueberries just goes right around the edge of your palate there and this is as I say the reason why a number of brewers that do these modern sour beers don't use hops in them so yeah you have this um, lovely big kind of juicy fruity character uh, coming out of the beer and you do get a few kind of placebo things in there it feels like there's a little bit of fig and a little bit of raisin in it but of course it's a big juicy blueberry note there and the kind of juicier side of the blueberry just goes around the edge of the the palate in there so yeah it's um, it's really interesting how this um, how this beer goes together actually because I was a bit sceptical of the banana side of things but I think it's actually worked out quite nicely and um, as always with these Bianca beers they're just you know, they're uh, just nice sippers it's nice to just sit and to sit and just sip these over the hour but a big it is very th this is one stylistically as I said earlier that very much straddles the line between a pastry sour and a, a, a smoothie sour it's got the smoothie side in the beginning but then as you go into the aftertaste you get more of the kind of pastry savoury sort of thing at this you can feel more of these savoury pastry type flavours coming out of the, the beer a little bit later 
So, um, yeah, this is nice. As I say, it gets a big thumbs up from me. Let's just round off this review then with a wee look at the mouthfeel. So, yeah, mouthfeel-wise, this beer, it's definitely kind of pushing the full-bodied side of things. I say it's kind of the mid-range of full-bodied. It's not, it's not the, funnily enough, it's not the thickest one that I remember from the the Bianca series, in fact. So that's an interesting point to make about this beer as well. But, um, yeah, there's quite a wee bit of that going on in this one. So lovely, kind of big, fruity, um, this is a bit kind of fruity, oily thing. But, yeah, I would say that this beer, for me, uh, mid-range, full-bodied, smooth carbonation, a mix of... It has got a wee touch of creamy smoothness to it, but it's also got a little bit of kind of oily slickness too which I find uh, really quite interesting so yeah the the way that goes together for me really is interesting as I say but yeah the malty character in this one there's a little bit of dryness underneath a lot of smoothness but a kind of sweeter character as well but the sweeter side of this beer really is quite dry too very little in the way a hoppy character I mean if this has got any IBUs to it it's going to be like five or something like that you know something very very low Pretty sure it doesn't use hops. And the sour side of things, um, as I say, it's a little bit tart in the beginning. Just behind that very front tip of your tongue, you'll get a little bit of a kind of sharper attack from the blueberries. But it mellows out really nicely. And as I say, you get the sweeter kind of banana, uh, savoury banana type note out of this one into the aftertaste. But the sharper juicy berries in the beginning. But as I said, overall, this is a very, very nice beer. And it gets a big thumbs up from me so uh yeah definitely very very happy with this one i can say that for sure but yeah i think we can leave it at that for this review so yeah this one was the bianca hydra a blueberry banana split last week was at six percent abv brewed by omni uh in from stockholm but brewed in uh Bucuriste hifte again in belgium in collaboration with mortalis brewing company who are featuring on the channel for the first time they are from avon outside of rochester uh, in New York State over in the US. So yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Omnipoil and Mortalis, and we will see about returning to both of these breweries at some point in the very near future. But until the next time, Slanja, Skull, cheers, see you guys in the next review.